Hi, I'm Bud Collier, and to tell the truth, I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Tony, creator of fine beauty products for the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Tony. From New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. Good evening. Welcome to Ted Max Amateur Hour, ladies and gentlemen. I just say that kind of stuff to see if you're paying attention. It is time, of course, for I've Got a Secret. And while I'm at it, good evening to our nice panel. First, there's Betsy Palmer and Bill Cullen and Bess Meyerson and Henry Morgan. Okay, now it's time to meet our special guest for tonight, our closest neighbor on CBS. Here is the host and moderator of To Tell the Truth, Mr. Bud Collier. Very nice to have you with us, Bud. Tell nice me, to be with you, Steve. How was your show tonight? Good. We always have a good time. Well, I know that, but I, the reason we have to ask, I suppose, is obvious enough. It's that the panel and I here are usually on stage talking to our uh, studio audience at the very time that you're on the air. I realize that, Steve, and that's why we've decided, since you cannot see it on television, uh, we've decided to bring the entire show live to you right here. Wonderful. He's not kidding, panel. As a matter of fact, he has brought his whole panel with him. So if you'll just make a little room at your microphones over there, we'll bring the gang out. Bud, will you do the honors? Be glad to. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, appearing for the first time this late at night, <laughs> the, to tell the truth panel, Kitty Carlisle. Carson Bean. Peggy Cash. And Tom Poston. And now, panel, uh, I've got a secret panel, that is. <laughs> Tom is loose over there. Um, aside from being just neighborly and all that, there is another reason, gang, why, why the uh, To Tell the Truth panel is here tonight. I wonder if any of you guys can guess, outside of all the kissing, <laughs> can you guess what that reason is? Oh, but, please. But Tom and I are getting married. <laughs> that's a possibility. We are slipping as usual. That's, we're not, we need help. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe this is the group that had fewer cavities. <laughs> Well, panel, to play it straight here for just a moment, you actually owe Bud Collier a debt of gratitude because he has generously arranged to have the To Tell the Truth panel take your place on this show next week so that all of you can have a well-deserved night off. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and Bud, on behalf of the I've Got a Secret panel, I thank you. Oh, not at all. It's a pleasure, Steve. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, it's such a nice thing that you're doing, Bud, that I would like to return the favor. All right. Because now that the I've Got a Secret panel has the night off next Monday, they will be free to take your panel's place on To Tell the Truth. Excellent. Oh, see? My simple pleasure. <laughs> I think uh, both the panels will enjoy the change for more than one week, don't you? Yeah, I hope they will. In fact, I'm sure they will. Good. Just so you don't think we're going to turn you loose on formats that you don't understand, a uh, new show without any preparation and so forth. We've worked out a little system tonight whereby both panels can get a little first-hand information on how the other one plays their own particular game. Good, and we're going to okay. begin now by asking the I've Got a Secret panel to get right to work. May we have our next contestant, please? <laughs> you fellas going my way? <laughs> I'll jump out here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the panel, or the jury, I feel as if I should say, <laughs> I'd like you to meet Mr. Patrick J. McKenna. He has a secret before you tonight. And uh, I want you to, <laughs> to forget the fact that there are three of them over here. Three of what? I'm not too sure. But anyway, I want you to question them or it as if there was only one of it or them over here because that's how it is. What he said. 
it's a little, if you think one of these games is confusing, try playing two at once. <laughs> but uh, in all, all seriousness aside, sure. yeah, uh, I will say that Mr. McKenna recently finished what I can only describe as an ordeal that lasted 120 days. Now, Mr. McKenna, uh, with your three miles, if you'll whisper to me, we'll show our audience what you did. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, uh, I admit that that's an ordeal, but a lot of people have done that. There must be more, huh? Oh, well. That is indeed unique. Okay, panel, the clue concerns uh, Mr. McKenna's four-month ordeal, and we'll start the game with Bess Myers. Mr. McKinnon, uh, I don't know which one I'm talking to. Did you do this alone? Mm. Hey, number one or two or no, three? No, no, no. Oh, no. All of them answer at once. No, you Did you do no. it alone? No, no, no. No. Was it indoors rather than outdoors? Indoors. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, were you, um, <laughs> couldn't have been awake all the time. Uh, was this some contest of some kind? No, no. Did it have anything to do with eating? Uh, you know, what's that? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, yes, it has to do with eating, I would certainly say that. That's uh, $20 down, and we go to Henry Morgan. Mr. McKenna, where are you in jail? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Is Man. the show always like this? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a hundred jailbirds on this show. Uh, usually after. Some of them in important capacity. Yes. A number of them were Boy Scouts. Um, we... Well, now I don't know what I'm up to. Oh, it had to do with eating. And uh, it was over a period of 120 days. And... <laughs> there goes half the money. We go to Betsy. Uh, Mr. McKenna, number one. Uh, I just ask all of them. Oh, just ask all of you? Um, I thought we were going to play this like the old game. The That's game. what you thought. Oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. McKenna, did you do this in this country? Yes. yes. Did you do this at a time of the year when you were likely to eat more than another time? No, no. Did you grow something to eat? No, no. no. Does it have to do with eating, really? Sixty dollars down, twenty to go. Bill Cullen? Does it have to do with not eating, Mr. McKenna? Yeah. Yeah. Were you, sir, on a 120-day uh, diet? I just... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it didn't work, did it? <laughs> well, bud, I, I've just about pinned it down, and now here's where we switch from one game to the other. You want to tell them what's up now? That's right. Now, you, you have found out, of course, what the secret was, but you still don't know who was the performer of the secret. So that's where the To Tell the Truth steps into it now. Uh, you're going to find out how they can trip up the imposters on to tell the truth. I'm going to ask you, if you will, to switch seats now. Do you mind doing that with them? Getting them the places. And then, uh, panel, I will read Mr. McKenna's statement. I'll read Mr. McKenna's statement and we'll let my panel try to figure out which one of the gentlemen is the real Patrick McKenna. Now, are you all set? Uh, li just listen carefully and follow along. We have to be, open our things. Yes, uh, open up that, that envelope. Do this now. And take out the contents and follow this, along. Uh, this is what Bud is reading. Are you ready? I, Patrick J. McKenna, a former newspaper reporter, have recently been doing promotion for traveling circuses. Lately, it became increasingly difficult for me to do my job properly because I was so overweight. Medical tests proved that my problem was simply caused by overeating. I entered an institution which does research on fat metabolism. I began a total fast. At the end of the experiment, I found myself 120 pounds lighter and the holder of a new record for fasting. I had not eaten a bit of food for four months. Signed, Patrick J. McKenna. These gentlemen all claim to be Patrick J. McKenna, who lost 120 pounds in the same number of days. Let's start this questioning, if we may, with uh, Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. Number two, what was the actual nature of your intake for 120 days? Uh, liquids with no calories. Uh, number three, would you include the soup, uh, soup stock among that? No. Number one, would you include rice in your diet? No. When you say no food, you mean no solid food of any kind? No solid food whatsoever. And no caloric intake in the liquid, number one? Uh, do you want to know my diet? Yes. Yes. 
My diet consisted of uh, a gallon of water a day, uh, a spoonful of honey, and lemon twice a day, and four B-plus vitamins. And that all happened in jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's another family. Peggy Cat. Mr. McKenna, number two, did they keep you in bed for the four months? No. No. Uh, well, number one, did you have a lot of energy? I felt like a tiger. Like a tiger? <laughs> Well, oh, and not in my tank either. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> number three, how many pounds did you lose? 120. Oh, uh, number two, did you do like uh, exercises? Did they have you do a lot of exercises while you were on this terrible diet? No. No. Arson B. Number three, what, uh, after the diet was over, what, did, what, did, what was the first thing you wanted? What was the first thing you ate? Food. I know. <laughs> what did it taste like? Did it taste strange? I uh, had to be very careful what I ate in the beginning. I did have soup. Soup? And uh, first meat was chicken. Number two, didn't you want a hot dog or anything good like that? I wanted it, but you couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. Number one, what about your clothes? I mean, did you sell them out to a tent maker or...? <laughs> I have three sets of clothes, before and after and now. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number three, how much have you gained since this diet? Number three. Since I've been out? Yeah. Uh, ten pounds. Is that all? That's all. Uh, number two, did you have a terrible headache the first three days of this diet? No. Because I've been on one of those fasts and generally have a terrible headache. Uh, number one, I'd like to ask a slightly indelicate question. Was there any kind of elimination at all? After yes. A while? Yes. Great deal. Uh, number two, while you were on this diet, were there any, were there any other people with you that you could talk to? No doctors and nurses. Nobody <laughs> else doing the diet with you? No. Number three, were you allowed? Oh, gee. That's all the time we have. It's time for you now to mark your ballots, panel. So, just as you would, over in your own home bailiwick, mark them up. Mark them without change and without any consultation whatsoever. Simply vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? No. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's all right. They can consult with us, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, they can yeah. consult okay. with you. Right. Sure. Uh, sure. Henry and I are consulting. You are. All right. Oh, all right. All right. Okay. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three, bud. And I'll have to let uh, Betsy tell you why, because it's really her decision. Because his Irish blue eyes are smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you think she's ready for it to tell the truth? <laughs> we'll soon see. Peggy. Well, I voted for number three because he's thin. And the thing is, I think he weighs about 150 and 120. That would have made 270, and then he would have been fat and had to go on the diet. <laughs> the other two are pretty portly still. <laughs> Orson Bean. Well, based on fat metabolism tests I've been calculating in my mind, number three doesn't look like he's lost weight. He's a solid kind of a guy who was probably always about the same. Number two, the whole story is ridiculous. And number one, <laughs> looks, uh, number one looks like the advanced man for a small circus in the Midwest. <laughs> and and uh, Beth has a marvelous reason. She'll What's your reason, Beth? Well, I said number one is wearing a ring in his middle finger, and he might have lost weight in his hands and had to shift it. Had to move it, it over. Oh. Oh. Uh, Kitty. Very Probably not right. Well, I voted for number three because Henry said it was number three. You say why. Oh, you didn't tell me how to say why. Because I eliminated them. <laughs> I guess the only one from your panel that we didn't ask was uh, Bill. I think it's number two, because uh, they've picked everyone else, and I figure if I'm right, I'm going to look great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the votes are all in, the minds made up. Let's find out which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is the man who lost 120 pounds in 120 days. So will the real Patrick J. McKenna please stand up? <laughs> We just have a split second to find out who the other two fellows are. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Stanley Van Sachs. I'm a member of Local 872, the International Alliance Theatrical Stage Employees. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, what is your real name? My name and is number Darryl three, Metz. what is your real name? What do you do? 
I am vice president of sales, Carvel Ice Cream Stores, Yonkers, New York. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. We'll pause now for this important message. I'm not kidding. Well, Bud and everybody, uh, I'd like to thank all of you. You've done a wonderful job, and we've had a great time. And when you get this many people, the only way to say goodnight is by saying so long. And to tell the truth, I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Tony, creator of fine beauty products. For the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Tony. From New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Ted Max Amateur Hour, ladies and gentlemen. I just say that kind of stuff to see if you're paying attention. It is time, of course, for I've Got a Secret. And while I'm at it, good evening to our nice panel. First, there's Betsy Palmer and Bill Cullen and Bess Meyerson and Henry Morgan. Okay, now it's time to meet our special guest for tonight, our closest neighbor on CBS. Here is the host and moderator of To Tell the Truth, Mr. Bud Collier. Very nice to have you with us, Bud. Nice me, to be with you, Steve. How was your show tonight? Good. We always have a good time. Well, I know that, but I, the reason we have to ask, I suppose, is obvious enough. It's that the panel and I here are usually on stage talking to our uh, studio audience at the very time that you're on the air. I realize that, Steve, and that's why we've decided, since you cannot see it on television, uh, we've decided to bring the...